You're watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Hello and welcome back to All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. I'm Tom Davis and as always, I'm joined by Joe Cole, my guy. Hello, geez. How are you? I'm all right, brother. I'm all right. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah. You're looking fresh-faced today, Joe. Do you know what, mate? I had a dreadful night's sleep as well. My daughter actually, when I dropped off at school, said, you look ill today. I was like, because I was up with my youngest three or four times. Like, he just, just runs our house. It's ridiculous, mate. He just just kept me up all night. You look good on it, though. You look... Well, it's professional lighting. Look, we do things right here at Joe and Coral. Look, 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 look proper. <laughs> I need to get me one of them. I look literally like a bag of shit. <laughs> I had a few beers. I mean, I, it was a, it was a, I mean, a massive, a very, very sad day in football yesterday, Joe. Because we said, we said goodbye to, you know, for my money, I think the greatest player ever to play the game in Diego Maradona. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, him and Messi are on another level, and. If, I think it just shows, it sums us up as a country, you know, like he, he actually, he arguably give us our, our most, well, one of the most horrible moments of the country at World Cups with a, with a yeah. hand of good goal. And we still like give him, you know, everyone, the amount of respect for him because we recognise what a genius he was and a flawed genius at that because to lose him at this age, you know, it's, it's so sad, but clearly, you know, he had his issues the last 10, 20 years. But uh, what a player. I, me I remember big man, I me he come to Chelsea once and I used to, I used to always get out to training early, and sometimes there'd be people watching, uh, watching training. So I always made a beeline. I knew they must have been a manager's friend or one of the lads or a, a scout or something. So whoever was standing there next to the pitch, I sort of went up and said hello, shook their hands as I walked out. And as I'm walking up to this geezer, I recognise him. I recognise him. And as I got close, it's like it's uh, it's Diego, isn't it? So I'm like. And I like, I just like a proper fanboy. It's just got like, I just got, ah, oh, Diego. All right. And it, it, the fact he knew my name and I just melted. I just, just like cuddled him. <laughs> like, you, know, you just don't let go of someone for it's just too long. How you doing? And then uh, we all, all, all got a picture with him anyway. And he got it up in the wall. And uh, next to him, my missus always says like, I I'm smiling more meeting Maradona than I was on our wedding day. <laughs> like them cameras. <laughs> It was just like, I was just, I was just so happy to see him. When I look at that game in 86, I think everything me and you and our generation, we learned everything in one game about football. We learned how harsh it could be and how, how much it can kick you in the teeth and how it's going to break your heart, but also how beautiful and how amazing it can be with, with that other goal. You know, that it's sort of, it. I think he gave us all of that. I, I remember if I remember 94 as a fan, because England weren't, we didn't go that year, did we? And no. got a big Irish family. And I remember everyone, we were getting behind Ireland and, uh, but I remember watching that game that he played. I think it was against Greece, and he scored an absolute worldie. And he ran the game, and he was unfit, and you know he didn't look the part. But he just, yeah, I know, they're saying about him. It's an amazing thing to go back and watch those old characters. Do you know? What I mean? you know yeah. And you think, don't you? I mean, do you think to yourself, Joe, how how would Maradona now in today's game? How where would he sit? How would he get on? Well. He's we have this discussion a lot on, B on BT. We talk about generations. We talk about the, the evolution of football and everything. But you, it's so difficult to, to compare. You, in fact, I, I say it's impossible to compare players from different eras because the game yeah. moves on so fast. All I would say is if you were top of the tree in your era, you've, you've, you've developed, you've, you've broken into the first team and you've be become this professional player and you got to the top of the tree, I, I feel you would do that in any era. The challenges are different now for the younger players, but if you was to parachute Maradona in a time machine from now until into this football, I think it 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 first of all think, well, why is no one kicking me? <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Why is the pitches like bowling greens and and uh, he'd probably take to it like a duck to water. He'd just have to probably have to um, rein in his uh, nocturnal activities a little bit, yeah, because. <laughs> It's not that them type of characters that sort of lived the life of a rock star and a footballer, you know, that doesn't really... Because that's the thing that, that interests me really as well, happen. though. I think where you say, yeah, generations change, and, and I agree with you, I think football's changed. But then I, I think to myself as a fan of the game, when I sit and watch it, I think actually for, for players like Maradona, Pele, Messi, for those players who, you know, dare I say, have like a God, what I'd say is a God-given talent to do something that's a bit different. I don't think you can train that. I don't think, I think you have to try and harness the lightning a little bit. Those players, 
the guys that just have that saying it a little bit special it doesn't matter where you put them they just i think they'd light up any pitch and i think that you know mm. it's a, it's a sad thing you know and you just hope that you, you can be remembered for that you need it's a maradona i feel you know amazing talent but he, he, he was a leader wasn't he you know so he's a yeah. very rare player with that kind of you know that the, the sort of the not the luxury player but the player that's going to make the difference but then that 86 world cup when you look at the documentaries around it like he was the leader the yeah. general like this little general like was he five foot five yeah, man. ball like man and he was all these because because i think the players in that squad openly will tell you like they wasn't they wasn't they were good players that won the world cup but they wasn't the favorites they wasn't no. he literally they you know the italians were, were were red hot that 86 brazilians the english i remember being backed at times and the argentinians weren't thought of but this little fella amazing talent just dragged his team with him like what he'd done to napoli and you know nowadays would maradona have been would have would he have stayed at napoli for as long as he'd done before one of the, the big ones would have no. taken him you know you know so it's such a unique story so, and he's so well loved in his country and I, again and i think credit to the british public for for the suave of you know um love given to him because at the end of the day he handed us a hammer blow in 86 with yeah, that handball yeah. you know like i don't think peter shilton's ever forgiven him for <laughs> no. it but he was just an enigma wasn't he and he was just he was just yeah and it was just like i said it was just sad to watch the last 10 years just you knew this day was coming because of the things yeah. you see and the things you read about Ari's Ari's living his life, but he, he lived his life to the max. That's for sure. He won't leave this world wondering, Diego. No. He, he was a he was a you know he, he did it his way. That's for sure. Joe, I think it's time to bring on a guest, and it's a power both mine and yours. And we're going to break from the norm here, Joe, because usually I do these big intros. Uh, but you've asked you want to you want to take that mantle and you want to bring in this guest. Yeah, I want to give this guy like if Coral and Joe would have asked me. Do I want Messi, Ronaldo? I said, nah, I want, there's only one man I want, Wayne Bridge. <laughs> the, the fittest, strongest, most animal of a footballer I've come across. Top man. We've had, we've played against each other, we've played with each other. Um, we've had some nights out. I've carried him home a couple of times. He's probably carried me home a couple of times. <laughs> He's got me so in a lot of trouble. It... <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's, I wouldn't have had anyone else in world football. This is this is the premier game. This is the big one. Oh, Mr. Blushing Wayne Bridge. <laughs> well, mate, Richie, I'm back, Joe. Bloody hell. We just started talking there, uh, Wayne. We were just talking about, like, obviously, we, we you know, Diego Maradona passing, one of the greats. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, it's an amazing thing. I've got to, like, if you look on Instagram, some of the pictures you see of his career, and he's like, there's an amazing one I just see a minute ago that I thought 433 had put up, and it's like, um, it's just him standing there, and you've got every player from all time just bowing down at him. It's an incredible picture. Like, they, you know, but I mean, for you, Wayne, as a player, did you meet, you met him as well, right? You met him with, with I Joe. I met him, yeah. Yeah, I did meet him with Joe. He was, he was amazing. I, I remember. I know I definitely had Southampton kits when I was a kid because my dad was a Saints fan, but I had the Maradona kit. My granddad got it for me. I just remember being in the park. Do you know what I mean? Wanting to be Maradona, he, even with the handball and everything. Like, yeah, it's, it's still people loved him. Yeah, we loved him, didn't we? It's an incredible thing to think of, and I think it's maybe that's what the British public really and all of us loved most about him was that he was he was so flawed. I think it's yeah. that thing. I think if you know, I. It, given the two of them, I remember, I don't know if you boys remember in 96 when we lost to uh, Germany and Muller scored the winning penalty and he did that dance after in front of the, I was at the game. I remember like, and I now, now Muller, I just still can't have, no. I couldn't have him. And <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, no. all he did is a silly dance. He's just put his... I know what he done. No, do you know what he done? Do you remember Gaza when he did that celebration yeah. where he's done that? Yeah. Like, puffed his chest out. Yeah. And he was sort of mugging off Gaza. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, and he pulled his yeah, shorts up. Yeah, don't want to turn up like... around me. I'll, I'll let him know what time it is. Oh. <laughs> Dad would go Gaza. It's a liberty. It's a liberty. Oh, Cole, you were taking his jaw for a walk. Um... <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. I remember that. But he had that thing where he was he was a flawed character, right? And he, he, he and, and, and he was a real character of the game, wasn't he? It, me, me and Joe. And, but you, when you started at Southampton, Bridgie, you'd have, you'd have started at a time like Joe started. So, and it was a sort of smaller club. I guess you had the, you had the old, old school players, the guy, you know, the old boozers and do you know what I mean? Who then, and then it became yeah. the Premier League and do you know what I mean? How was, yeah, I, how was that journey? The best, that was the best, well, obviously gone to win trophies later in my career, but I loved the early days. Um, yeah. 
I obviously I was quite a shy kid, um, but I, I I loved it still. I loved it like when the lads would get together and go out on a night out. Maybe it happened a bit too often because it would be after a game you'd go out Saturday night. And then some people would carry on onto the Sunday, <laughs> and then you train Monday, and then it used to be a Monday club. So obviously it was probably a little bit too much. But there were so many characters. Yeah, I mean, I remember watching when I first watched Saints. You had Razor Ruddock playing. Yeah. You know, Tiz was a character. There was just so many characters, and the banter. I remember after games that like on a coach. What we get? Are we having fish and chips? Are we having pizza? Like yeah. Now everyone's having yeah. a salad and a protein shake. It's, Do you know what it, I mean? I, I loved it. I did love it. How long have you both known each other? I've known Bridgie since I was we were seventeen and he was eighteen. But this is the good story when we met. Both playing got called up for England under 18s tournament in Spain. But we was playing for the uh, Bridge was at Southampton. I was at West Ham playing in the Prem. So there was a group of players that had to meet up at Heathrow after our games to fly out on the Sunday morning. So there was about five of us. There's a couple of lads. One lads played for Wolves. One was at Crewe and a lad at Sheffield United. And so like, <laughs> we're driving down from Southampton with Bridgie in the car. He's like, what are we going to do tonight then? And I'm thinking, oh, shit, it's on me. I've got to p- produce a night out. So I thought, oh, we're just going to London, like give it a big and we'll just, yeah, <laughs> just find somewhere. So all right, so we got there and all these five lads with an FA dignitary. You know, one of the guys that you see shaking hands with the players yeah, yeah. before the games, like in the suits. So his job was to take us out to Spain the next day. So we arrived at the hotel in Heathrow. I've got to come in. We go down London. I'm thinking, I don't know where I'm going to take him here. So I just go, because I, I used to go to my local, do you know what I mean? I've got to, the boys are coming from all over. I've got to produce for him. We went out in England so, track uh, suits as well, I think. Yeah, so we all had England track suits. <laughs> that was a purposely like, dumb we thing. Like, so. We looked like... We looked like the in betweeners, like 18 year olds. We went to London, so I thought, right, you go literally up to got this a geezer in a pub going, Who are those five little yeah. melts who say they're both pretty good? So I've got up to little the geezer. Little did they I've know. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone, right, uh, we've got to Leicester Square. I've gone up to the fella. I've given him a bullseye in his pocket and gone, Listen, mate, I've got, got the England under 18s here. Like, <laughs> you let us in. <laughs> he's got, he's obviously got, seen the 50 pound note. He's going to go and come into the club. So we're in the club, but it's like house and garage music, like no one in touristy clubs. I had a great night. Got like it got to about three or four in the morning, and like I just Bridgie's there dancing on a speaker or something. <laughs> I thought, Listen, we should, no, actually, we, should we should go asleep. home, you know. We, I fell asleep <laughs> on a speaker yeah. at one point. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got um, I've got Listen, we better get back. We've got to fly out to Spain tomorrow, and um, it's all right, all right, geez. But we lost, we lost the fella, David Wright. Didn't know where he was. So he's the first time he's ever been to London. So I thought, well, we've got to go home. So we went home. Went, when we got home, thinking a good idea for 17 year olds, the FA Dignitary's room started like smashing his room at four in the morning, like waking him up and then running away. Because <laughs> you're still kids, you know, you think. And uh, anyway, the next morning you woke up, you know, you, like, you think, oh, what did I do last night? And, and, but we can't find righty. And I'm thinking, it's five minutes before we've got to get on the coach to get to the airport. I think to myself, oh, Bridget, what are we going to do? Like, I'm going to have to go and tell the like the dignitary, like, I've took the lads out in London and we've lost a player. I didn't slept, even know anyway, there was a dignitary there. He I was just, that pissed. I didn't <laughs> even know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we brought him, we brought Bridget, he's literally five minutes to spare and right, he's come running in. I felt, like, you know when you think, like, oh, I was so happy because I, I, I would have I would have shelved the blame because it was my idea. And anyway, come running out. The dignitary, fair play, didn't say nothing about it. Just took us to Spain. We carried on with the tournament, played, whatever. And uh, that's the first time I met Bridgie. And I thought, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a bit of me. But this is it. Like 10 years later, I was playing in a cup final. Forgot all about it. And he, the, the, the dignitary, he was going along the line shaking hands. And I, I hadn't seen him for years. Like, and he's obviously gone up. To, he's like now with the first team. And so am I. He's leaned into me before the cup final. He said, like, remember when you woke me up at four or five in the morning that time and I didn't say nothing and I was like sorry sir sorry sir I've got, I've got a game to play now anyway that's how I met Bridgie and, and loved him ever since I suppose you know you two when you sort of linked to you joined Chelsea at the same time right you you both you signed yeah. for Chelsea at that same time was that the thing where you sort of, did you both know you were on the precipice of something quite massive did you sort of think like this is this is 
this is a life-changing move for you both. And, and how, how does it work when you sort of join a club of that size? You were coming from Southampton, right, Wayne? Yeah, I think for me, it was just pressure. I didn't really have that pressure at Southampton. Young kid come into the team. Um, obviously, I, I didn't feel, because I was one of the young lads, I never felt there was as much pressure on me there as it was when the money's been spent on you, really. Yeah. Then you've got to perform. Do you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, I was, there was pressure playing in the Premier League, playing the Saints. But I was playing well, going to a new club and the money being spent, everyone was just going to have their eye on you straight away. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I echo that. I mean, it's like, you know, we all, you have to remember, like, we was 21 and 22 yeah. at the time coming in there. Like, but you, because we got in the team young, we played lots of games. But yeah, the, 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 the um, what's the word? Um, the stakes were higher there, you know, going, because you go from your, your, hut, your club where, you, where you're like, not a big fish in a small pond, but you're in England international. You're playing for West Ham, Southampton, and it's great. And everyone's, it's lovely, great club. And then West, you come to Chelsea, and all of a sudden we're in there with like Marcel Desailly, you know, these like proper, like giants of the game. Yeah. And you're playing with them, and you're like, wow, this is, this is something else. But mm. Bridgie took it to it like a duck to water. Like Bridgie was, it took me a while to get into the side. Bridgie went straight away, bang, nailed that left back spot. And I, and I always knew he was a top player, but. Playing with him that first season regularly, you're like, what? This 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 player is unbelievable because he was. <laughs> I think that year was as yeah. good as anyone. No, he was. If ever I'm lacking in self confidence, I just give Joe a call. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was, he was as good as anyone in in the Champions League, and and when he scored the goal against Arsenal, because I I remember that game vividly. I was talking about it briefly just off air, Bridgie. Like, I think that's a that was a turning point in Chelsea's history because that Arsenal team were the Invincibles and they were like unbelievable. But on that day, we were a young, energetic, vibrant team. And when you'd like to just show that the fact 85 minutes into the game and that powerful run, you went in and the finish. And I will finish. never, ever forget yeah. your face running off to celebrate. It was, <laughs> if you ever see like <laughs> happiness in a man's face, it was amazing. It was, score a, it was a great finish, It was amazing, mate. I think the, difference, amazing. the difference as well, like, no, no offence to players at Southampton. Don't go there to good players. But when you're you're training every day against top quality players, so it was bad enough having to play against Coley like twice a year, but then you've got to train against him every yeah. day. It's hard. It is hard. And it is one moment that really stands out to me, actually, with you, Joe. <laughs> I do, you probably won't remember, but I was injured. I broke my leg. I know what you're going to um, say. Broke my leg. This... Dislocated my ankle. I've been back about two days, um, and then you know I'm not I'm not one to say anything. I just get on with my job. But I'm, I'm one on one with Coley. They basically stuck me on the wing, and me and Coley in this box, and we've got to go one on one for like twenty minutes. Jeez. Uh, he never let me have a breather, mate. He just kept coming at me. He was twisting. He was turning. <laughs> and I'm lucky enough because after about ten minutes, one of the lads went, "Go." Give him a break, will we? He's just come back from a broken leg. And just, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, mate, I forgot, yeah. Like the, I remember going to watch the the, the famous game, the 4-2 against Barcelona, which is one of the most incredible. I went with a load of my mates who are big Chelsea fans. I went supporting Barcelona. It, it's one of the best <laughs> games of football I've ever ever watched. You know, it was incredible. Um, For games like that, I mean, we talk about Maradona. On that pitch at that time, you had Ronaldinho, you had Messi, right? A very young Messi was playing, right? Mm. How were you? Would you have been up against Messi, uh, Wayne? Would he be? Oh, I, at you? I was injured, I think, at the Barcelona games. I think it was before I broke my yeah. leg. Oh, was it? Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Yeah, uh, yeah, you um... I had a tough spell with Mourinho where I was kind of in and out of the team. And then I actually remember I turned the corner of him and it was before the Newcastle game. He said, You'll play in. And he, and he was. He pulled me to the side and basically said, you'll be playing against Barcelona as well, by the way. Yeah. And I turned the corner with him then and then I broke my leg. So that was that, really. He was a tough one, Mourinho, because, yeah. you know, like when he was in his favour, you was, it, you know, you was in the... And, then, and when he wasn't... But which you could, I, you I, could, feel, so, you side, could but... feel so outcast. But I think he was just looking for a reaction for players. But I just felt like that's me done sometimes. But I, I was one of them players that always worked hard, like Joe would. Like if you weren't mm. playing, you'd naturally work hard. You'd get the odd player that would just fuck it off completely and go, yeah. I ain't training, I'm injured and stuff yeah. like that. Because, I mean, you come into, cause coming into this weekend and we, we're just, just there where we're talking about Jose and then obviously Frank, you both know really well. When it comes to Jose, what, 
how do you get around that? If you know, if he's not like Danny Rose or whoever, if he's not into you, or if he doesn't believe in you, how does it? How do you, do you just have to keep working hard and hope that at some point he's going to turn around and go, no, no, I'm going to go with you? Well, well he he said, I think going back to Bridgie, I think if Bridgie wouldn't have broke his leg at Chelsea, it'd have been Chelsea left back for the next ten years. Yeah, um, no doubt about that. He just, oh. I think jo- Jose Jose, he pushed you. He. You know, he, he knew the character. He knew he'd get a response from me or Bridgie by sort of ostracising us. There'd be other players who we might try and mollycoddle a little bit, you know. Um, so I think at Tottenham, what he's done with it is he's brought the players in he wants to do. You know, you see the, the Amazon documentary, right, the, way he sort, the way he sort of dealt with Harry Kane when he got him in the office and was like, listen, do you, you, you want to win trophies. You want to, you know, you want to be competing with Messi, Ronaldo. I remember him doing a similar thing to Frank at Chelsea. And I don't know if my memory is a bit skewed with here, but um, it was in the shower when he said to Frank, you're, you're the best player in the world. You're one of the best players in the world. Like, we're going to make you this, this. And at the time, Frank was, he had a great season the year before. He'd always scored goals, Frank, but he, he had gone on another level. And I remember hearing Jose say that to him. As, and it just, you know, like talk about management, little, little things, just putting that in. It was just a little sentence. And Frank talks about it today. It sort of giving me puffed his chest out, you know, because still at the time, remember Chelsea had Seba Varon, you know, yeah. Manuel Petit, world class, uh, you know, these people, and Frank was still a young ish player. So talk about Jose and his man management, like he knew Frank probably needed that. But on the know, flip side thought, of that, Joe, like, on the flip side of that, at, like to say that to a player in the showers, like in front of other players, mm-hmm. that's great for some, for Frank. Does that make you feel more ostracised? Do you feel like, hold up, he's got all this belief in him. Do you think that mm. that's Jose going, Frank needs this to get to this top end and this person might need a little bit harder? Or do you think it's like, well, I'm just going to concentrate on this guy being the best? How, how do you, like Wayne, where it comes to that sort of thing? How do you feel there? The only thing I compare it, I can compare it to if you were going to do that is me and Ash, when Ash come to Chelsea, that I always thought Mourinho definitely had his favourites. Um, so, you know, there'd be five or six that he, he could probably, you'd always see him having a laugh with and stuff like there, there would be times I fell Mm. out of him and he just wouldn't speak to me at all. Wouldn't even say hello, but I always worked hard. And I think the only thing I compare it to when I say Ashley Cole is I always thought a lot of the people that come in, like Gallas was playing left back, Del Orno would play left back and I'd always end up getting back to play in. And especially after my injury, I went on loan to Fulham and I still got back into the team when I come back. Um, and then when they signed Ash, I was actually playing really well. Mm, and yeah, we was. we were playing against Charlton, and I was I was playing well that game as well. And I think we were either one nil. I think we were one nil up, and they got an equaliser. Bang! My number come up. I'm up. Up. I was off. Ash was on. I knew then that that was my time because they spent the money on Ash. Yeah. And to mm. me. I just thought I'm playing well and I've been playing well, but that's me done. There's nothing I can do now. Like I still mm. got my head down and played and I'd still play, I don't know, 25, 28 games a season. But I, but Ash was that Ash was great, mate. He's he one of the, he was one of the best left backs in the world, one of the best left backs there's ever been. But I was just gutted because I was playing well. But you just know deep down I'm not gonna get back to playing. So when someone's saying that to Lamps, if you've got like another four midfielders there, yeah, yeah, that are trying to, they're probably thinking, how am I going to get a game? Then you got Balak, yeah. and they're thinking, how am I going to get a yeah. game? It's hard. So because Joe, like, you'd, yeah, have, like, you'd have been there, Joe. But even like Joe, I've seen Joe Mourinho's brought him off after twenty minutes. Him and yeah, Sean, do you remember? Yeah, remember yeah, he brought yeah, yeah. him off, and I'm thinking, yeah. that hurts a player. But like, yeah, mate. Well, right, he took that a lot better than me. But yeah, Joe, right, I smashed the changing room up. Did you? Right. <laughs> Like, yeah. So, because that's the side of you, though, Joe, like, right there, that I I can't imagine, like, knowing you as a, a bloke and whatever, and as a player, I've watched you from the very start of your career. When you say you smashed this changing room up, like, like getting take 20 minutes, or, so you're playing for 20 minutes, you get brought off. So, how, 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 how is that? How, like, Listen, y- y- the only thing that stopped me having a, a front up with the manager straight after the game was the fact that we lost. Uh, Fulham away, it was me and Sean Wright Phillips. You know, the game was a bit hectic. Being a winger, like when you're not getting on the ball, you can't really affect the game. And looked over and you, your numbers are coming. What's going on here? You know, so you sort of compose yourself because you know the cameras are on. I went straight down the tunnel into the changing room. Uh, I can't remember whether Shawnee went and sat on the bench. I thought I was fuming. 
I smashed the, the changing room up a little bit, you know, like, not like uh, incredible Hulk levels, but, you know, there's a few tables got tipped over and all that. I was so angry, furious, because it's, it's dents your pride, doesn't it? You sort of, I sort of stopped myself. I got on the phone to my dad and then I sort of, he said, look, just box carefully. Do you know what I mean? Because he's, he, he's made a rick. He's, he's whipped off two players after 20 minutes. We've still got beat. And I was back in the team a week later or two weeks later. But the difference between me and Bridgie's situation with Bridgie with Ashley, because I remember Bridgie... Were you having a bad game or... Cause, to no. be honest, it, well, no, that, that, that's the thing. Like, I remember when he got brought <clears> off and I thought, that, that's harsh. So if Joe had squared up to him, I had something to say to him, like mm. rightly so, in my opinion. I, it happened to me at Wigan. I got brought off at half-time and the team were playing shit. And it's like, I didn't do nothing exactly great, but he was shouting at me the whole first half. And I, I'm sat if I know if I've played a bad game, I ain't stupid. Yeah. I'm sat there thinking, yeah. what the fuck does he expect me to do? Yeah. Right. yeah. Getting back to his weekend's games, though, because obviously it's it's massive, right? It's this, you know, top two, Chelsea, uh, Chelsea, Tottenham, you know, Frank versus Jose. I mean, Frank, it's, Frank's got two and two over him, right? Frank, Frank is it both? So I think he's Chelsea... beaten for Derby. He, he beat him for Derby. Then last year, there was the big game at yeah. White Lane. I think Chelsea won, didn't they? With a sending off for uh, Son. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I think Jose's won, won in the uh, League Cup so how, recently. Uh, how much you, when you watch Frank now as a manager, how much you think Frank's taken from Jose and, and, and gone, right, that's, that you know, his styling of management? Or how much is it when you look at it and go, well, that was always going always to be oh, how it, Frank dealt with it? or. I think Frank would be a totally different in terms of dealing with the players, but I think he would have took a lot from his training. But there's one yeah. thing I liked about Marino is his training was spot on. Mm. The, yeah, intent, well, the intensity he, of it and stuff. Well, do, do you remember, Bridget, when he first come in, like it was just a revelation, wasn't it? The training yeah. was amazing. I've never felt fitter yeah. doing them kind of football-based fitness. And basically, Jose took that training from Barcelona method of dology of training, you know, where it's like small sided games, different, different size pitches, different, you know, one, a lot of, a it was lot always of good. Everyone always enjoyed it. Yeah. Always. Two on twos, one on yeah. ones, three on threes, like really tough. It was, and I, but not only that, the, the Chelsea methodology from that day within the academy was taken a lot from Jose. They, I don't know if the, it, a lot of them sessions at the first team were done were then yeah. incorporated for all the age yeah. groups. So it becomes it becomes a, a style of play throughout the club. Yeah. Brendan Rogers, and, Brendan Rogers took a lot from him really because you, when you used yeah. to train with the reserves, it was all Mourinho style training. He he took yeah. a lot from him as well. Yeah, that, and that's that's basically so Frank and the boys, the coaches would have. I just think it's the only way to train footballers. He used to say something, Jose, and I use it a lot. It's like, if you want to be good at the piano, you don't run round it or pick it up, you play it. So training was always, it's so simple, but it's, it's so brilliant. logical. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and he's like, so like, well, so what, you've got these managers running you around the pitch hundred times and lifting weights there. You've got to be able to handle the ball, make decisions, move the ball, you know? So we said that. And so Frank, let's go back to the answer to the question. Frank, Bridgie's right. Frank's me training methods will be s simple. I think Frank's a different character to Jose. Yeah. And his coaching stuff different, so there will be subtle differences, but it's it's intriguing, ain't it? It's like the the master and the apprentice going up against each other. <laughs> it's I'm like a bad kung fu movie, big man. That's what it is. <laughs> Bridgie, what do you think they've done? Like, obviously, Chilwell's coming in your position. Like defensively, they've really tightened up. Like, I mean, as as that for you when you're when if you're left back coming into a leaky defence and then, but he, he's he's done well, Chilwell, hasn't he? I always think about Ashley Cole and, and they say, oh, well, how good is he? And I'd probably say, well, he's not as good as Ashley Cole defensively. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. Ash is just like one-on-one. -on -one. I just don't think anyone would really get past him. You see Mark Ronaldo out of the game, Messi out of the game. But don't. But going forward, do you know what I mean? He's he's, he's good and he is good defensively. Mm -hmm. There's still pressure on him. Do you know what I mean? I know he's gone and there's, they've had other signings, but there's pressure on every signing that they've signed. There's pressure on Lamps now. There's pressure on all the players. Do you know what I mean? Whereas last season... There definitely wasn't as much pressure. Obviously, there is pressure on Lamps. He's got to do well with what he's got. But now he's spent money. There's pressure on him, but there's also pressure on them players. And how old is Ben now? Do you know what I mean? He's still he's still young. He's young. He's, he's young. young still. Do you know what I mean? He's doing well, mate. And like I said, Thiago's coming, but he hasn't played as much. They look good, mate. I love it. Like is I think Lamps done tremendous. I think it's, it's, I mean, I like you know going forward. They look you know. 
I love Werner. I think he's great. And the kid from Ajax is another level. Havertz yeah. coming in. I love in. Mason Mount yeah. as well. I love well, Mason Mount. He's I mean, great. he's Frank's favourite, right? I love Mason. Yeah. I think he's a yeah. brilliant player. He's but great, lad. Do you, who do you fancy coming in? I mean, prediction wise, I'm going to be careful here, right, Wayne? Because last week I called four all, right? And I've had <laughs> nothing t- but t- abuse. <laughs> I know what I want. I want Lampsey to win. Do you know what I yeah. mean? But I'm always going to say that when I'm playing chess, but I just want Lampsey to do well. But I think there's a lot of people that are jealous of the chance that he's had as well. So yeah. I really want him to do well. But do you know what? When Marino's on a roll, it's hard. Yeah. You know, he's mm. like, it's hard to bet against him. I think the way it's gone from him, like take this season out of the equation, the way it's gone from him before that, I think he hasn't handled certain things well when it hasn't gone his way, Mourinho. But it does seem like the old Mourinho to me, the way he's got the players playing and it's it's hard. Mm. It's, it's a tough one to call. I, I'm, I'm nervous because I look at that Tottenham team and for the first time, I mean, I've been openly... I like I winding up the Spurs fans. My <laughs> mates are Spurs fans. I like. No one them wants them to win the league, do they? No one. Come on. <laughs> I like. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, me, me, family, my friends, they're, they're all Spurs fans, and like, I like giving it. But, but there seems to be something that's changing. Something tangible at Tottenham. Like they, they look like a team that's got a little bit of strength of character now. The manager would have implemented that, no doubt. Like he, he's cracked the whip. Um, the signings have been good. He's got everyone on board, like you know that little that little touch he done with Re- Regal on the left back, yeah. where he um he said to him, if Mares, if you stop Mares dribbling past you, I'll buy you a leg of Iberi- Iberico ham, yeah, uh, yeah. Iberico ham. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Ham on. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, Mares ain't dribbled past him, and the gaffer's bought him a big a big leg of the ham for lunch. And little things what like would that. Would you have got me, Coley? Great <laughs> 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 right, Estella. I got you a little, weekend, of red li- wine. little weekend in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> weekend? That ain't enough time for you. <laughs> Mares, by the way, he is, um, he, he's, uh, he's a player. He's so now, isn't he? Yeah. I would have yeah. loved to have played against him in my prime because I played against him when I was at Reading. My knee was gone. But I remember playing... Never really knew of him at all when he twisted me inside out. Yeah. Obviously, one at my best, but I was just like, yeah, my time's up, mate. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> horrible that, up. mate, isn't it? When it's, like, yeah. it's horrible that. But you know, Mourinho saying that to the fullback, you know, he thinks the fullback's capable of doing it, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, I guess that's the belief. He knows the fullback's capable of doing it. I guess that's the belief he shows. I mean, Chelsea are coming in at 11 to 10 for Coral, 5 to 2 on Spurs. Draw is thirteen to five. I, I personally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a little tickle on Chelsea. I fancy Chelsea. I just think, I don't know. I, I fancy them. I fancy Chelsea coming in. I think two on Chelsea. Well, how, how, was, how did your four four turn out last <laughs> you week? Prick. That was a bold yeah. statement. <laughs> four four. Wait, hundred to one. I've had more trolls on that than anything else that I've ever had. <laughs> it's been terrible. Uh, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to the handshake after the game if Lampsy gets one up. Really? I know. Yeah. I know, you, I know there'll be a yeah. handshake, but do you know what? With Mourinho, sometimes you know if he wins, I could. No, I wouldn't want the handshake and the little pat round the side of the head that he does. Oh. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, Lampsy will not be having that if they've lost. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh god. We've... I just think if one day I'm going to go into management and then just like. All these little things you got to think of, and like, oh, it's all the, there's certain people out there, you'd be like, oh, I wouldn't want to lose I, to him. I, I wouldn't want to lose to him. Nah, but I've heard you say it, Cole. There's a ch- there's a great chance Tottenham can go and win the league this year. Oh god! And I'm a don't. bit like, I don't want it to happen. And like, I think for that not to happen, they need Lancy to get one up on one up on him this this weekend. Joe, you I mean we've talked about, it and you you you. You want to get into management? They're saying you look mm. at right. You, you're quite serious about getting into it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it takes all sorts to do it. Bridges, you know, I can see Bridges like like, like a, men, a mentorship. Like if you've got a young left back and you've got Bridges to work with him, because although he doesn't watch football religiously, he knows he knows it. He's an expert. Yeah, I know, I know, he yeah. knows where a left back will have to be, or he know where a centre half. You know, yeah. if you showed him a goal. And said, right, what's going on here? He'd go, bang, yeah, bang, course, bang, that's yeah. what's happening. Yeah. But he just won't know the names of the players. So that's fair. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? So Number there is seven, there. get over here. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, but there's, there's a, because he's got the wisdom, because he's played hundreds and hundreds yeah. and hundreds of games. So he knows what he's doing. But for me, in my perspective, like management's something for down the line that I will do. And I'll, I'll definitely do. I've got my badges. I've experienced coaching over in Tampa. 
at the back end of my career as player coach. And also, you know, I spent a year in the Chelsea Academy, which was unbelievable, you know, like just the, the, the standards and yeah. that they have to get to every day. But, you know, I enjoy doing stuff like this as well, mate. I'm sort of in that middle bit at the moment. I love my, my work for BT where I, I study the games and analyse the games and I love my spare time and, you know, the fam, my family are young. And I love doing things like this where you get to chat to your friends and yeah, yeah. hopefully we're all in the same room together. We're, you're we're like Scotty and Lampsy. Like I've heard so many good things about them while they were doing their badges and they live and breathe mm. football as well. And I've heard good things about Coley that have worked with him. And you, yeah. you listen to how he speaks as a pundit, he speaks sense. Yeah. And he, and he speaks well. So I think if you ever go into it, there'll be loads of people yeah. that'll be... Giving you offers. At what level would you look yeah, at going just, in, Joe? Just remember me, Geese. <laughs> you're in, mate. You're in. Where would, where? Social, social secretary. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> My goodness. What level would you look um, at going in at, Joe? Like, where would be like? Um, I'm open to anything. It's, it'll, it'll be strictly timing with me, Tom. When I decide, um, I won't be a slave to opportunity in the sense like, if something come, unless something was unbelievable, I wouldn't take it now because I recognise that myself. I need to spend this time with my family yeah. and my friends and just just because a 20 year career, I didn't finish playing. I started at 17, didn't finish playing until just a week before my 37th birthday. So, you know, there was a lot and I, I've had two years off of it now. I think another year, maybe another one more year and then start edging back. But as terms of level, for me, it's about the, the it's about the product of the football I put on the pitch. It's not, I don't have to be, I'm not snobby. I don't have to be Premier League, Champions League. League One, League Two, conference. If, if the I feel like I could implement how I want to set a team up and put that on the pitch and watch it grow and and, and like that, be creative like that. It doesn't matter the level. And it's again, I think with Bridgie at the nail on the head, it's working with people you want to work with as well because so much of football and football managers is if you if you've got too many people around you that ain't pulling in the right direction. It's so tough. You're watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Right. Who's winning the league this season? Maybe the Toffees can continue their great form. Will the Blues benefit from German firepower? Will it be about a Belgian who can put a ball on a sixpence? How are the champions going to cope without him? Whatever happens going to be exciting no one knows football better than a coddle football better do you know the country's biggest football fan coral are on the lookout for the most dedicated fan each month alan shearer will pick out this fan and they'll receive a thousand pounds to spend on football experiences of their choice and at the end of the season alan will pick out the ultimate football fan who will receive ten thousand pounds to go towards football experiences of their choice. If you know this person, head to footballfanoftheyear.co.uk and you could nominate a friend, someone you've met at football, or even nominate yourself. Uh, speaking of fans, uh, news out now, the latest news is that we should be having fans in before Christmas at some ground, so that's exciting, isn't it, mate? Ah, oh, mate, it's, it's integral to the game. I, I, I said this, I've been on broadcasting, and I said, this... This what's happened and the fact that fans had not been allowed in the ground has really shown the importance for the spectacle of what the fans are. And I hope coming out at the end of this that the clubs the clubs really respect that, you know, in terms of ticket prices, in terms of prices for kits and travel and all that. Yeah. The fans are just as important as any other part of this the wheel for the Premier League and that. So I'm looking forward to it and it, just to bring that life and, and that passion back into the game. I, I thought, I mean, I've, obviously I can't wait to be there. I can't wait to be you know, at West Ham. Or, but it does feel, as a West Ham fan and, and, and as Wayne yourself as a Southampton fan, it weirdly feels that, I don't know whether they profited from not having fans. They're doing they're... right about the fans, isn't they? I was going to say. <laughs> no, no, Saints, but we don't want no fans <laughs> back. No, but they're both, <laughs> they're both thriving, it feels. Like Southampton, yeah. I, I've... I've Done a bit of work for Southampton over the years, and it's a. I mean, it's a, I think it's an incredible club. I genuinely think it's yeah. one of the best run clubs. It's a really nice. I feel that everyone who works there, certainly a couple of years ago when I was working for, it was great, and the fans are brilliant. It's, but I mean, they're flying at the moment. How much do you think that is down to? It, do you think that's anything to do with the fans, or do you think that's a man, you know manager? What way in there? I mean, it, 
they, I mean, because they every time well, I think well, they're gonna they're gonna come unstuck here, they look blinded. Yeah, well, my my dad said to me this morning because he said about the fans, massive Saints fan by the way. He said, "Oh, we need those fans to stay away." I think it's just going. <laughs> I, I think it's going to go downhill. So if you, go, oh, if you go by what my dad said, it's going downhill if the fans come back to Saints. <laughs> Bridges dad's a <laughs> Mick, Mick, I love you. Um, I think there's definitely there's definitely players. And Coley will probably agree with me that will definitely 100% benefit from fans not being there. They'll be more relaxed on the ball. They'll be more relaxed in themselves that they're playing better football. There's definitely players out there that benefit from it. Right, let's get on to another massive game. Southampton versus Man United. Coming into this game, and I have to get a prediction from you both, Southampton United. I mean, Bruno Fernandes feels at the moment he's a bit of a want, for me anyway. He feels like he's carrying that team. Like he's, he, he's mm. looked incredible, right? I mean, Joe, you're a fan of him? Yeah, oh, I, I love Bruno Fernandes. Uh, he's a leader, but what I think what's happened with him now, it, I, I feel like I, look, I watch him play, I feel like he's he's at that stage where he's getting a little bit frustrated because he, he would have signed for Man United and thought, yeah. right, this is me, I'm in trophies. And he's gone into the dressing room and I, I look at him play and he's outstanding. He's he's the best player. He's sort of, he's pushed Pogba into the periphery, hasn't he? Because yeah. like, he's, he's, that, he's that creative force. So I can see him possibly... And I don't think Man United fans will uh, looking. His head will be turned soon. I think there'll be yeah. clubs looking at him because it seems like, like you said, there's some great players at United, but there's obviously things that are not right there in terms of people, the, the structure. Yeah, of the people have got to realise United aren't United anymore. No. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and but, 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 but people can't. They struggle. But Liverpool suffered with that for years. You can see Gary Neville struggles to accept it. You can see it on yeah, TV. Yeah. He struggles. Gary is struggling, mate. But, he's, but... he's coming on in a couple of weeks. We'll, we'll get right into him. <laughs> How much is that down to, to like you know? You think Souls got? I mean, Southampton come in. They're they're in good form. They look strong as a side. Another loss here for Solskjaer. You know, like for me, when I watch Fernandez at the moment, and we were talking about Maradona earlier as a creative player who leads the team. It feels like Fernandez isn't only their most creative, but I mean, he's you know four to one first goal scorer. It just shows you there that you know the sort of pressure on him to mm. score the goals to create the chance. It, but he feels like he's the the leader of. He's sort of doing everything. And what do you think when it comes to Solskjaer coming into this game? How big is this game for him? Like if if they lose. Massive, massive isn't it? game for Solskjaer. Like, who, who, who are you picking though? Like if you if you pick on recent form, exactly. You pick Southampton, exactly. right? And if you're picking United over Southampton now, the only reason you're picking United is because you're thinking, yeah, yeah. Saints. The Saints' luck has got to yeah. come to an end at some point. Yeah, yeah, that's but, it. it yeah. Do you call it luck because they're playing well? I think they'll be up for it, but I think Southampton could frustrate them. Yeah, mm. and then it's, it's how they deal with that. Do you know if they're not if it's not going their way in twenty minutes? I look at that team and think, oh, what are they going to do? do? The the, pro- the problems for me at United are just deep rooted. I think they don't they go longer than this game. I think you go Ed Woodward decisions been made on transfers over the last. You know, I think it goes beyond that. I think I think Ole. I think he seems like such a lovely fella. You want to you want him to do well, but I just think I'm with Bridgie. I just think Southampton could could do it because they're the form team, and you just got to almost put the history of the club behind and think, right, this isn't the Man United that we know. This is a new team. And I think Southampton have been fantastic. And I, I love watching them. It's one of them teams because they play with such aggression and such energy. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going I'm to go with Southampton as well as a prediction. Mm. All three of us. I, I'd, I'd like seeing United down yeah. there. I enjoy seeing United down there. They've been, at the t- no. they've been at the top for so long. Let's just keep them down there. <laughs> I think the Premier League now, I think, I, you know, you guys were you were at Chelsea at the time when Chelsea sort of became the Chelsea that most people know now. But the Chelsea weren't that club at the time. You two had essentially, you yeah. know, the birth of that. Do you know what I mean? And and had to suffer with people like you know whatever people you know, having a zig with Chelsea. For me now, though, I, I the thing I love this season is I when 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 you're sitting looking at it and you think that fucking Villa game. 7-2, you look and you think anyone could fancy a chance against anyone. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Mm. Mad. Like, mate, I looked at the odds for to win the league a couple of weeks ago and they were top. <laughs> <laughs> was, it he- was it a heavy night, Bridget? The odds weren't that great, so I never bothered. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to be big, wouldn't they? They'd have to be long old dogs there. They'd have to be my, big. My, pal, my pal got 80-1 for Spurs, Bridget. Can you believe was that? It? 
80, 80 to, to one. 1 weeks after the, they got beat on the first game of the season he got 80 to 1 on Spurs to win oh the my league God. Fucking yeah up. and he had a decent few quid on it as well Wayne thank you so much for joining us my man no it's thank been you a, it's been great chatting have a little walk down memory lane yeah. Uh, I hope you watch this guy. I genuinely hope you can tune in for the 90 minutes to watch Southampton beat United. That would be it. <laughs> yes. is... I'm going to watch when it. The... I'm watching it. We'll get Bridgie on again yeah. when we're in the office, right? And we'll we'll we'll, we'll watch it. We'll, we'll do it on like maybe we well we have to do it on a certain day, but we'll go and watch a game. We'll get him watching the whole 90 minutes, and I'll commentate through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're South Southampton. Let's do that. It's always a cracker. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Nice one, Bridgie. Thank you so much right. for joining us, No, thanks, brother. guys. All the best, my man. What well, a great guy to chat to, Wayne Bridge. Uh, Joe, uh, last week, we, we come up with the house chat tag, big man, little man, right? F- for you, Joe, the greatest little man of all time, the great Diego Maradona. The great, flawed, talented. Uh, you're trying to think of words, superlatives to talk about him. He was just... He looked, the biggest thing I say to him, he looked like he played the game like he was from a different planet, didn't he? Yeah. In the same way you look at Messi, you yeah. must see the world in a different way. Yeah. And he lived life how he played, fast and hard, and we lost him too young. Yeah, that's a sad day. But, uh, but thank you, everyone, for listening. Joe, thank you for joining me. We'll be back next week. See you next time. See you, guys. You've been watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. 